Hello everyone. In this lesson we're going to take a look at energy, its different types, and how it can change forms between those different types. So the first thing we want to do is define what energy is. And energy, and energy is the ability to do work or cause change. Energy is measured in joules. Uh, that's named for a person. Um, and it's not matter. So matter is anything that has mass or volume, is made of particles and takes up space. Energy does not take up space and it has no mass, right? If I heat something up, I've increased its energy, but it didn't make it heavier. It didn't add more mass to it. Uh, and if I turn on the lights, it's not like there's less room available in anywhere. Uh, that light does not take up space. Heat and light are both examples of energy. Uh, a whole bunch of different types of energy includes kinetic energy, which is the energy something has due to its motion. Uh, and I can increase something's kinetic energy by making it move faster. Or if I have two things that are moving the same speed, the one that has more mass will have more kinetic energy. Potential energy is energy something has because it's unstable uh, and it's likely to change. The more likely to change it is, the more unstable it is, the more potential energy it has. And a couple types of potential energy are gravitational potential energy, which just depends on how high something is, right? If I have a boulder at the top of a cliff, uh, Earth is pulling it this general direction and it's fairly likely to change. It's got a lot of potential energy. This one here has less potential energy because it can't fall as far. It's not going to have as big of a change. Uh, so it's energy stored because of its position and the gravitational field that is acting on it. Chemical potential energy is the energy that exists between atoms because there's a mutual attraction between atoms. So just like this gravitational attraction causes gravitational potential energy, attraction between atoms causes chemical potential energy. And when atoms form bonds, that energy can be released. And so generally we think of chemical potential energy in foods and fuels because we break old bonds and form new ones when we burn fuels uh, and that allows us to get the energy out of those things. And then of course there's energy in waves like I mentioned earlier, light is energy in a wave, sound is energy in a wave, uh, and we'll explore those more in some later units. Uh, now thermal energy and temperature are interesting concepts because a lot of times we get them confused but they're actually different things they describe different things, they measure different things. Thermal energy is the total energy of all the particles in an object. And it depends on a few different things. It depends on the particle motion, uh, basically how rapidly those particles are moving. It depends on the particle arrangement, which tells me it matters if it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And it depends on the total mass, which means it matters how much stuff is present. And so if I think about one ice cube, versus 10 ice cubes, if they're all the same temperature, um, they don't have the same amount of thermal energy because this little ice cube all by itself has less particles, less total mass than all of this ice together. And so uh, this has got more thermal energy over here simply because it has more matter. Even though the particles are arranged the same way as solids and their temperature is the same, they're frozen at the same temperature, the one that has more mass actually has more thermal energy. And it starts to get a little weird when we're talking about substances made of different kinds of particles because the different particles themselves will have different masses and different attractions for each other and that can change their thermal energy. Now if I were to heat these up, that causes those particles to move faster and when the particles move faster that increases their kinetic energy and that means that I've also increased their thermal energy. So temperature is not a direct measure of thermal energy but uh, thermal energy and temperature do have a relationship. If I increase something's temperature, I have also increased its thermal energy because I've made the average kinetic energy of the particles go up. And temperature is actually related to that. The average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance is what temperature uh, measures. And we measure it in degrees Celsius, right? This is a different unit than the energy of, or the unit of energy. The unit of energy is a joule. The unit of temperature is a degree Celsius or a degree Kelvin, well, Kelvin, which is the same change, but Kelvin starts at absolute zero. And you might see that in lab. So don't confuse temperature and thermal energy. There is a relationship between them, but they're different. Temperature is just one part of thermal energy. It's the motion of the particles. It's not how many particles are there. It is not how those particles are arranged. So a hot cup of water has a higher temperature, but less thermal energy than um, a lake because of the number of particles and the mass that's there.
The last thing we want to look at is the law of conservation of energy. Now this is a big deal. A conservation law, we're going to see a couple of them, says that things can't be created or destroyed. We always start and end with the same amount. Uh, and so the law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. However, it can change types. So all those types you listed at before, we can change kinetic into potential energy or potential into kinetic energy or even kinetic into thermal energy. Uh, so the total amount of energy in any scenario stays the same. If it doesn't, then you lost some somewhere and you've got to figure out where it went. Uh, so if you begin a situation with a thousand joules of energy, we're going to end with a thousand joules of energy. But it doesn't mean it's all in the same place or even in the same form. So energy can be both transferred and it can be transformed. And those mean different things. Transfer means that it moves from one thing to another. Transformed means that it changes from one type to another. But conserved means the total amount stays the same. And so when an energy transformation occurs, the energy changes from one type to another type. Uh, and so we could have, uh, when, some, when you're driving a car, you put gasoline into your car, which has chemical potential energy in it. It's burned, which converts it to thermal energy. The thermal energy makes the car's engine go, which makes it kinetic energy. And then the kinetic energy could like power the car up the hill, which would give the car gravitational potential energy. None of that energy was created. Uh, the chemical potential energy that we started with in the fuel was ultimately converted through several steps into gravitational potential energy. And if we measured all the different forms of energy that we had and all the different places it went, we would see that the total amount of energy did not change.